Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. This is episode 10. Before I get too far today, I wanted to take a quick pause to thank the over 100 subscribers I have so far. You guys are awesome. Thank you for helping me this far. I, I can't I can't even emphasize it. I want to thank you all. And to continue, today's lesson has to do with egress. Specifically, how to figure out your occupancy load. The reason this is important is because you need to know how many occupants you have in order to know what direction your door needs to swing. You also need it in order to know how many exits you are required to have, how wide your stairs need to be, and other things similar to this. So let's get started. The first thing you have to do is get the square footage for each one of the areas you are calculating. There are some areas that are not based on square footage, but they're so far and few in between that I'm not going to get into that today. Perhaps I will leave that for another video. Second, you need to understand and know what use is given to that area or room. For example, it may be an office, a conference room, a break room, a storage room, and these areas are all calculated differently. Once you have the square footage, you must divide such square footage by the load factor provided by the building code. Most states use the International Building Code or IBC. Other states are based on the IBC and therefore the code sections and tables are usually the same code section or the same table number. So with that in mind you can find the table with the load factors that are required in IBC Chapter 10, Table 1004.1.2. As you look at this table, you will notice that not all room descriptions will be found. So in some instances, you're going to have to make a reasonable selection based on the closest matching description. It looks a lot more complicated than it is, but most occupancies are easy to understand. Let me show you an example. Here we have a typical floor plan of an office building. And like many office buildings, the suite we're going to look into only takes a portion of the floor and the rest of the floor is taken by other tenants. Therefore, the areas that are shown in red here are the adjacent tenants that are not part of our area. Let's assume that our suite is composed of the following. The areas in blue are offices. The area in green is a break room. The areas in orange are conference rooms. The area in purple is a storage room. And the rest of the area, which is in yellow, is your open office area where you can just use it for cubicles or other open office needs. After you figure this out, now that we know what these areas are being used for, we need to know the square feet of each of these areas. So we tally each one of these areas. We figure out how many square feet are in each of the offices or each of the break rooms, etc. Then we have to divide each square footage by the load factor that is on the table. What this will now give you is the total occupants in your suite. Now let's break this down for a minute. As I mentioned earlier, some of these areas are not specifically named in the table in the IBC. Let's take a look. The offices, for example, you're not going to find a category called quote unquote office. Instead, if you look at the table, you'll find a category called business area. And this will let you know that it's one occupant per 100 square feet. You will also not find a place in the table that is called a break room. But in the table, you will find a section that's called assembly without fixed seats. As a matter of fact, underneath that, you see a subcategory that's called unconcentrated tables and chairs. And that's what a break room is. You have tables and chairs so that you can eat and have lunch and things like that. And it says there that this will be calculated at one occupant per 15 square feet. Same thing with the conference rooms. A conference room is also used for assembly. You have tables and chairs typically. And so again, we use an occupancy load of one occupant per every 15 square feet. A storage area is actually noted on the table. There's a category there called accessory storage areas. And it lets you know that it's one occupant per every 300 square feet. Our open office, well, we already talked about how an office is classified as a business area. So we use one in 100 square feet. So there you go. 
That is how you categorize each one of these areas. Now, let's talk a little bit about the occupants. You will notice that I rounded up all my occupants. For example, one of the offices is only 120 square feet. Therefore, if you divide 120 square feet by 100, you will only get 1.2 occupants. Now, you would think that if you're rounding to the nearest hole, then that would only mean one occupant. But that is not the case. In most jurisdictions that I've worked with, they always round up. That is why I typically round up. And if you see here, all my rooms are rounded up and the total is 64 occupants. And just like that, now you have your total suite occupancy load. Not that hard, is it? I hope this helped. And I know that the table has other categories, but if you look into it reasonably, you will find that you can usually categorize any area fairly easy. I hope this helped. If you liked it, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe today. And tell your friends about me. Share this video. Hopefully, it'll help them too. But for today, that is all I have. Thank you for tuning in. This is Archie Corner, signing out.